Now, everybody here is familiar with TED Talks, but what about a TED Talk where the presenter has done zero research, <laughs> spent zero hours rehearsing, and has zero idea what their topic is going to be in this game? <laughs> Each of you will be given a random topic. You will then be asked to give a 100% improvised TED Talk, OK? Now, to help you guide through, you, through your TED Talk, we've prepared a PowerPoint uh, slides, some PowerPoint slides <laughs> that none of you have seen. You don't know what they'll be, but you can flip through using this remote right here, OK? The presentations will be judged by somebody somewhere, and a winner will be declared, <laughs> and they'll win nothing. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Are you ready? Reggie, you're the only person here who's actually given an actual TED Talk, so we're going to start with you. <laughs> There's your clicker. Please, Reggie, step forward, and you have to start with your name, what you will be talking about, and it will then be revealed. Take it away, Reggie Watts. Thank you. Hello, I'm Reggie Watts, and today I will be talking about why it shouldn't be weird to call your boss <laughs> mom. <laughs> now, in neurolinguistics, people oftentimes talk about the reason why one should or shouldn't, but really, the question to ask is, how come? And that's <laughs> what leads me to this. You see, <laughs> no one knows why anyone does what they do or why they choose what they choose. This man, who knows why, but it works for him, and that's what we like to talk about so many times. Now, vertical integration is something I've been working on. Uh, for me at five to six years, and it's been absolutely wonderful. Let me tell you a quick story. Uh, <laughs> It's not like two things are the same. Now, you'll notice that these are identical, but there is only one thing that differs in this picture. Please try to identify what it is. I'll give you two seconds. Too late. <laughs> so, <laughs> in conclusion, we are all just people. <laughs> we have been people for many years. Of course, when we're on our own, we're just a person. But in general, when we're in groups, we are people. In my work with artificial intelligence, I have never known anybody oh. stronger nor shorter than my colleague Azwal Ul Alpar and Alakah. <laughs> he is one of my favorite people in the world. And that's why I say, if tomorrow is where we are, then why not let's not be there now? Thank you so much. <laughs> Wow. Pass over the remote. OK, follow that. Next up is Edie Patterson. State your name. You will then find out what it is your TED Talk will be about. Here okay. we go. <laughs> Hello, I'm Edie Patterson, and today I will be talking about flamenco dancing your way through a divorce. <laughs> Guys, let's get real. Divorces are hard. They leave you feeling a lot of feelings, many of them bad. <laughs> but the thing we want to do about that is to start moving our bodies. Get our bodies moving really fast, really sensually. Get your bodies going in a way that reminds you of when you liked sex. <laughs> Now, when you integrate flamenco dancing into recovering from your divorce, you will be asked many, many times to picture Steve Buscemi. <laughs> this is because we don't want you to climax too quickly <laughs> on the dance floor. Now, we will start you with pictures of Steve Buscemi with his hair combed very neatly back. <laughs> That will delay your climax. <laughs> then, we will, then we will move on to messy-haired Steve Buscemi, and you will ruin the dance floor. <laughs> Guys, let's get into collaboration. <laughs> you can't flamenco dance on your own. Everybody, classic phrase. You can't flamenco dance with only two feet. <laughs> 
you're gonna need some people to do this with you. So you're gonna wanna go to corners, to coffee shops, <laughs> to places in the middle of malls where you can yell loudly. You're gonna wanna get people to come near to you in your person and get to dancing with you. Now, only 1% only of people will answer that call. <laughs> But guys, not to throw classic phrases at you all day, you only need the 1% to flamenco dance your way out of a divorce. <clears throat> now listen, some of you may be crying right now, still full of grief from your husband or wife leaving you. <laughs> but there's only one thing you gotta get into your body and into your spirit for flamenco dancing through your divorce. <laughs> you're gonna wanna get a machine that turns you into a dog. <laughs> and then you're gonna be able to flamenco dance so quickly, so smoothly. <laughs> get ready to ruin those floors, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well done, Edie. Okay. <laughs> Hello, I'm James Corden, and today I will be talking about the truth about Girl Scout cookies. OK? Uh -oh. <laughs> Girl Scout cookies. Think about it. Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> if you grew up in the United Kingdom, this is not something you are overly familiar with. <laughs> You might only know about Girl Scout cookies from an episode of Friends, <laughs> or every now and then, randomly, once a year, a ton end up in our kitchen at work. But that's why I see the truth, OK? <laughs> Mr T. <laughs> Mr T, what does the T stand for? Thin mints, OK? Yeah. That's right. What a lot of people don't know is that Mr T has been trapped in a legal dispute <laughs> with Girl Scout cookies because he considers them, frankly, too delicious, <laughs> too fulfilling, mm -hmm. and he is certain they are laced with cocaine. <laughs> I think it was Mr T who said, I pity the fool who gets addicted to those cocaine lace products. <laughs> now, this is important, OK? This is important. This is important. What you've got here is a Venn, Venn diagram. Girl Scout cookies, murderers, <laughs> and this here in the middle. Not every Girl Scout is a murderer. <laughs> but let me tell you this. Every murderer was a Girl Scout. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's discuss the elephant in the room. <laughs> what about Elon Musk? <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. If he's so smart, why can't he bring out a savoury cookie, OK? <laughs> He's working on it, and let me tell you this right now. Elon Musk is going to take those cookies to the moon. So, in conclusion, in conclusion, let me say this. Scratch below the surface. <laughs> Look inward. Is it a little girl knocking on the door trying to sell you cookies, or are you part of something bigger? <laughs> are you the problem? And that's why. <laughs> <laughs> because if you carry on, America, <laughs> if you carry on with this lie, don't shrek yourself. <laughs> Wreck yourself. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK. Shrek yourself. <laughs> All right. All right, go on, Bob. Here we go. Come on, Bob. Oh, no. oh, no. 
Yeah. Okay. We've, we've had a lot of fun here today. <laughs> a lot of lighthearted topics, vertical integration of Steve Buscemi got involved, and Mr. T. I'm here to tell you something that matters to your life right now. I'm Bob Odenkirk, and today I'll be talking about the benefits <laughs> of eating the banana with the peel. It's not what you think. <laughs> it's not sexual. <laughs> it's not innuendo, okay? I'm talking about bananas, the fruit that you buy at the... <laughs> at the Cineplex. Okay? You hear what I'm saying? Go to the Cineplex. I, when, people haven't been going to the movies. Get back to the movies is what I'm trying to say because they're serving popcorn, of course. Hot dogs, yes, you knew that. Nachos, some of them, not many, but some. <laughs> And now they have bananas with the peel, but of course, they ask you to please don't leave the peel on the floor. So they want you to eat the whole banana. And I'm here. Wow. I'm here on behalf of the whole culture. <laughs> the whole culture. Every <laughs> side and corner. Everything. I'm, I'm here representing movies, television, parades, <laughs> ventriloquism. <laughs> because what we want is we want bananas uh. in the. It's just. Your body. <laughs> your body is one half banana. <laughs> this part. Everything in there that's light, the banana colored, is made of banana. <laughs> Pure banana. So the bottom line is, in conclusion, <laughs> gobble me, swallow me, drip down the side of me. <laughs> it's not sexual. It's not sexual. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Odenkirk, everybody. We're going to choose the winner. The winner is. Edie Patterson is the winner, ladies and gentlemen. You're the official champion of Where's Your Tether. We'll be right back, everybody.